So our next guest for today's show, we've got Raymond Cowles III from uh, Sideline Cancer. How you doing, man? Doing well, doing well. How are you? Good, I'm good. So um, you started playing uh, to your college ball at Santa Clara. You were a four-year player there. So what was that experience like, and how did it help you as a, as a player? Oh, it was a great experience. I mean, you know, I got to, you know, I got to do, have the best of both worlds, um, education and basketball. Um, I learned how to, you know, play for the team basketball out there. Um, so it was a good experience overall. And we played at a high level also. You know, we got to play Gonzaga, St. Mary's, LMU, um, even Pepperdine every every year. And BYU got into the mix a little bit later. So uh, it was a fun experience. So um, after your uh, college career, you bounced around a little bit. You, um, you found yourself in the summer league in the summer of 2015 and 2017. You ended up winning a summer league championship in 2015 so kind of what's the summer league like for a player like you kind of fighting for a roster spot and what's the uh kind of what's the uh vibe around it at during the summer just a lot of different players from a lot of different places yeah yeah I mean it's a it's kind of a it's a cutthroat environment but um when I was there it was really uh everybody was kind of cheering each other on nobody was really out to take each other's spot at least you couldn't tell Mm -hmm. you know um, we was every it was all the team team sport, um, and we we all came together to win that championship. But but you always want to go, you want to show out, you want to show that you're you know show that you're professional first, um, you know not not going crazy in Vegas and doing stuff like that, um, making sure that you know you're on time to practice, make sure you all the little things you do, um, as well as try to show your game and, and show your talents that you belong. So um, it's kind of a mix of both, and I think they get a, a good feel of the players when they when they uh scout them at the at the summer league so um you moved on to the nbl in uh 2016 and this was probably uh one of your best seasons as a pro in uh 2016 you were second in the league in scoring you uh made the nba nbl all-star five so kind of what was clicking that year what was uh, the experience like and just uh give me a little bit about your experience that year um that was just hunger um, you know, that was just, you know, not getting picked up, you know, and getting bounced out of the G League, um, you know, going different places and not getting really a shot. And so when I got that shot over there, um, I knew I had to make the most of it. And so every game I had a chip on my shoulder. Um, and my teammates really had my back also out there. Um, it was a great culture, great atmosphere to play. Um, I loved it. So how, in, like, in terms of that, obviously you're in a different country, um, how do you? How would you say the uh, basketball environment was kind of different in terms of fans, in terms of other players? Just in, just a difference overall from what you were used to. Um, are we talking about from college, or are we talking about from just from, college, from just what 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 else you had done before the uh, NBL? Oh, I mean, it was just it was just a different environment. You know, like you get into different situations where um, you kind of feel alone, you kind of feel isolated. Um, and you don't really have too much support, too much help. Um, so I was in a lot of those situations just before. Um, and then I got to New Zealand and it was just more of like a family, you know, they, they treated me with respect, you know, they didn't treat me, um, you know, like an import who who didn't not show me around and stuff. They showed me around, they brought me in and then, um, just kind of helped me acclimate and and to kind of come into my own over there. It was good. So um, just to kind of piggyback off that, you've played in a bunch of different countries throughout your career. So obviously it's not like you're on vacation or anything. You're moving to a new country. You have a goal is to play some good balls. How do you kind of adjust to moving into a new place and then also be able to focus on basketball? Um, it's tough. It's tough. I mean, you really got to – I got the process down now, I feel like. Um, you know, it's just because you have to focus on, you know, what you need to do. Most of the time when you get there, um, the first things you see are the gym and your your apartment. Um, and that's where you're going to spend most of your time at. So you get real comfortable with that route. Um, and then you kind of can, after a while, you can kind of venture out. Um, but other than that, you stay in the gym. You ask your teammates kind of what's going on. But until that, you just stay locked in and, and just try to get better every day so you make sure that you solidify your spot out there. So um, this isn't your first year playing TBT um, for Team Sideline Cancer, but uh, just tell me a little bit about how you got involved with TBT, what, like, what kind of drew you to it, and how the experience overall has been through a couple of years playing. Um, well, I'll be, I will be lying if I said it wasn't for the money. 
Um, you know, the money is always good, but it's also the best competition you're going to find in the summer. Um, so as far as that is concerned, is working on your game and being able to play, you know, high level competition in the summertime um, against guys that are, that are proven that guys that are you know, doing their thing overseas. Um, it's, it's the best, it's the best thing going. And uh, I'm excited to be a part of it. And with sideline cancer, uh, my, my teammate from when I played in one of my countries in Finland, uh, he brought me on and he, 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 he basically recommended me. And it's just for a better cause, you know, and I'm always mm -hmm. about, I'm always about basketball is basketball is bigger than, you know, just a ball and, a, and you know, and a hoop. And I think a lot of players would agree with that. So um, to be able to play for something a little bit bigger and a little bit better, um, as, as well as the team, it's, it's always a plus. And we love, we love sideline cancer. Yeah, and I think that speaks a lot to what the TBT is about. We have you guys, sideline cancer, we've got the team playing for Jimmy V, who just got admitted to the tournament. We got Challenge mm -hmm. ALS. I think that's a special thing for sure. Mm -hmm. So, um, you guys did have you had a solid run last year. You know, you had you made easy work of self made. You, <laughs> you shocked the shockers on their uh, on their home court. So, what was that like? I mean, you're in Wichita. They're 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 big basketball fans down there, and you're on the home court. And you pulled off that one. What was that like? Oh, that was amazing. That was, a, you know, a great experience. You know, the stage was set up perfectly um, for them and for us. Um, it was a, you know, when you're a basketball player, those are the games you, you dream of, you know, to be the underdog, to play in a situation like that. And it felt like back in the college days, you know, um, playing again, you know, you got crosstown rivals, except for now we're just playing the home team. Mm -hmm. um, it was a great experience and to just be able to weather through that. That's, you live for that as a basketball player. So um, then the next game, unfortunately, your tournament run came to an end against the uh, Golden Eagles, the Marquette alumni team. But it should be noted that that Marquette team was able to make the uh, finals and they uh, lost to uh, Carmen's crew from Ohio State. So does that really mm -hmm. make you guys feel like, from last year's team at least, that you really had a shot to take home the $2 million? A little bit uh, just looking back on it now. I think so. I think we had a lot of new faces, um, a lot of guys that hadn't played in TBT, uh, including myself. And I think that um, I think we felt like we had a really good a really good chance. Just that Wichita State game, uh, it took a lot out of us. And that next morning, that next day, um, we played against a great team that made it to the championship. So obviously, we feel like you know we have a a, a spot in the TBT and and a and we're a team to be reckoned with, but. You never know. Um, we like the underdog status also. Yeah, being the underdog in this tournament, I think it's one of those – It's it's. I think it's an underdog-driven tournament, and I bet from playing through it for a couple of years, you could agree. And I think that what I, what I see throughout uh, both the teams that I think that have continuity, like you guys, I think they just have such an advantage because you're playing with guys who you've played with before in this situation where there's so much like mixing and matching in terms of who's on your team and who's not. So um, when you uh, – last year you were really good shooting-wise in the tournament. You shot over 40% from three in your three games. How mm -hmm. big is your jump shot to your game, and how do you kind of uh, pivot off of it when it's not falling on those days? Oh, I mean, it's, just, it, it's really big. I mean, uh, if, I'm, if I'm knocking down threes, it's, uh, it's a dangerous – it's a dangerous game for, for the other team. I, I, I do say so. And that's with any, any shooter. Any shooter gets hot, they're going to – you know, it's, it's, it puts pressure on the defense. So um, if it's not falling, um, which can happen, it's always going to happen. I'll still rely on that. Like I think, I think teams still have to respect my shot. I'm going to keep shooting until, until I make shots, um, as any shooter would. So um, that's just my role, you know, to to be there to knock down shots. Um, I can create and, and get to the basket a little bit, but really, I'm I'm, I'm going to knock down three. Um, so we'll see what happens. So um, this year, you guys come into the tournaments a little smaller due to the uh, pandemic. So what, how has your kind of reaction throughout your team been to the new format? Do you think it favors you guys that it's a little bit smaller of a field? How, what's kind of the consensus on that? Oh, yeah, the smaller the field is, the better. I mean, you know. Oh. Something came up. Sorry about that. Don't yeah, the, uh, the, the, smaller, the smaller the field, the better. Um, as for every, any team will tell you, but um, like I said, though, I would like to play games, but um, as far as winning, I want to win. So the shorter the shorter the field, the, 
feel better, like I said. So what do you kind of see as your role on the on the team this year? What, what do they what do they get from uh, you and where where do you where are you uh, what's your most important role? Where do you carve out and make the difference for sideline cancer? Oh, I'm I'm a shot maker. Um, I'm a shot maker and I'm gonna get after it on defense and I'm gonna talk a lot on the defensive end. Um, so as far as leadership on the defensive end and and you know, just trying to bring a spark if we need it. Um, I'm also good for that. But we have so many weapons um, that that's what makes us so good. I mean, we all know how to play basketball. We all know how to talk. We all know how to communicate. We all know how to share the ball. We all know how to knock down shots. Um, and you need all of that. So, um, but yeah, if I say anything, shot maker and, and defender for sure. So um, also just uh, with that COVID-19 format, you guys are going to be in isolation. It's, a, it's kind of a quick schedule. Although last year you played games one day after the other, so it's not too different in that sense. But um, how, are you, do you know a little bit about what that's kind of going to be like? Or have people around your team especially just kind of how they kind of reacted to knowing that, you know, it's going to be 10 days, you guys are together, and you're getting after it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's going to be an interesting experience because um, it's nothing like we've ever seen before, you know. Um, you're going to be locked down. And, yes, in college you would go to the games and you stay in the hotel and you get on the bus and you go to the gym and you go back to the hotel. Um, but you can still, you know, move around. This is a little bit different. We're not going to be able to move around. Um, we're probably going to be right on top of each other, um, you know, in and out trying to figure out, figure things out. Um, so it'll be a little bit different, but I think it'll get us, give us a chance to get to know each other and get us a chance to come, come together even more so than we already have. So another a little bit of an elephant in the room is they did put you guys as 22nd out of uh, 24 <laughs> seeds. Uh, I imagine that you guys uh, might have not taken that well considering you guys made the Sweet 16 last year. Was there kind of a reaction in the, uh, throughout you and your teammates? Or was it kind of just like we kind of expected to be uh, undervalued a little bit? Um, we didn't expect to be undervalued. Um, with the run that we made last year um, and the majority of our guys coming back, um, you know, we thought maybe we have a little bit higher seed. But you can't argue there's a lot of talent in the TBT. There's a lot of talented teams. There's a lot of teams that are doing mixing and matching now because it's a smaller field. Um, so, like I said, we'll take what we can get and we'll just keep it rolling from there. <laughs> So uh, your first round matchup is against Team Hines. Do you know anything about them? Have, do you as a team kind of look at this as a scouting, from a scouting point, do you guys try and learn a little bit about the team? Or is it more of a, we'll, we'll be there, we'll figure it out when we're, uh, when we're in Columbus and we're trying to like, learn together? Obviously, it's probably a lot harder by the fact that you, even with the TV and, TBT in general, you guys can't really see each other that much before the actual mm -hmm. event. So how does that kind of change preparation from like, what you, were, what you were used to in college and a professional and other um, levels. It's a little bit different. Um, you have to, we have to rely a lot, on, a lot on our basketball IQ and a lot because, you know, we've all played in different places over the, over the years. And we've all seen each other play and we've all had film. There's always film on everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we kind of know what each other's, you know, strengths and weaknesses are um, in terms of international basketball-wise. Um, so – Using our basketball IQ in that sense, so we should be okay like we did last year. But we always try to do um, a little bit of work um, before, the, before the games. <laughs> now I can't just come into it blind. Yeah. So um, you also are slated to play the um, – it's kind of an interesting format because you're going to get the, the six seed possibly if you win, and you might get the three seed. So I think that – would you say, although you guys might feel a little bit undervalued at the, that, that seed level that you got, do you think it could be a positive in terms of who you play where you think you're more near the talent of the top level and you might be getting more mid-level tier? Um, I think that uh, I think for us it's, it's not so much about um, who we're playing. It's about just us coming out playing our best basketball and, um, and trying to raise awareness for, for sideline cancer. Mm -hmm. um, because that's that's our that was our main goal behind it, and now um, as we're getting more competitive in the tournament, um, we still want to keep that main focus. And, it, and it's all about us. We're a family, and we're gonna move as such. And we're basically just worried about you know playing playing for us, playing as a team, playing as a group, and, and representing sideline cancer to the best of our abilities. And then uh, 
as you saw last year, that's pretty powerful. So I think we, we think it can take us a long way. Mm -hmm. Definitely a powerful message and something that's great to play behind. So um, what, what happens this year? What is the perfect scenario? Obviously winning the million dollar prize, but just maybe go into a little, what needs to happen? Who, who needs to play well? Who, who, what needs to go down for you to walk away, you and your teammates to walk away with that uh, million dollar prize? I think this, our, our, our biggest thing is um, we just can't run out of gas. I think that's what happened to us a little bit. Um, in Kansas last year against against after Wichita State and we came up against Marquette. Um, I mean, I think we had the firepower to, you know, do do what Marquette did. But we just we got tired. We were overwhelmed by the home crowd and everything, which is why the T V T is so great. But um now it's a little bit different. So um we'll see if we don't run out of gas and we'll see how far we can go. Yeah, is I I mean I don't know about your personal playing experience, but this is probably be one of the first times that at least in a professional saying that you're playing in front of zero fans, even if you've had sparse crowds before, which I bet every player has at some point. So how mm -hmm. do you think that's kind of affect you as a player and just the tournament in general, just guys overall? Um, I think it's going to be different. I mean, we love the fans. We feed off the fans as players. You know, we feed off of that energy. You know, you make a three, it gets loud. You get a dunk, it gets loud. You get a fast break steal, something. Um, and, and that's what kind of makes it, you know, you know more lively. Now it's going to be more like a pickup game feel, and um, it could be more of an advantage to some guys than others who usually go through the crowd. But I think all of us um, have played at least a game or two with zero fans overseas, um, if they played overseas last year. Um, and so I think everybody has a little bit of experience in that background. Um, but it'll be interesting, you know, it'll be really interesting to see how, how it plays out and, and who has the most energy coming out. So the last – uh, last year, obviously, we saw Carmen's crew take the uh, championship. And the four years before that, it had been overseas elite. So it was kind of like, uh, were you happy to see another team winning? Did you feel like it opened up a door a little bit? Obviously, you would have wished it was you guys. But just that mm -hmm. you don't have the same champion every time was a little bit like the uh, <laughs> the Warriors dynasty in TBT. We had the overseas right. elite dynasty. Right, right, right. I mean, obviously, you, you don't want to see some team win it you know, years in a row. Hats off to them for, for playing such great basketball for four years in a row. Um, that's an amazing accomplishment, even, you know, even, even if it's just the TBT. I mean, the TBT is a uh, great tournament with a lot of great athletes and great players. So um, now it's open, and now there's a blueprint to how to, you know, beat them, kind of, if you, if you would say. Um, yeah. and, and there's a, there's a standard that the TBT says that when you play in it, you just you have to come and bring it. Yeah, you can't you can't take anything for granted. This is not, you know, show up and play. This is this is time to put in work and then you gotta dive on the floor and go get it. So and that's what Camus crew did last year. So um be interesting to see what happens this year. All right. So uh that's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for coming on and thank you guys for listening to uh some interviews. Uh good Good luck in the tournament. I can't wait to see you guys uh, ball out and uh, prove that that 22 seed was some disrespect. I uh, appreciate it, later. All right. Thanks for having us. Thanks for talking to Sideline Cancer. All right. Good luck, man.